Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Moldovan political parties. So today's episode was requested by Camille, VV, Rich Fari, and Vlad1 all on YouTube. If you want me to do another country's political parties, please either comment it down below, send me an email, or put a request in the feedback and request form in the description. I currently have requests to do Moroccan parties, Swiss parties, Chilean parties, Slovenian parties, Kazakh parties, Argentine parties, Iranian parties, Mexican parties, Armenian parties, Iraqi parties, and many more. I would also like to thank the PAS for responding to some of my questions via email. I greatly appreciate it. In order to understand Moldovan parties, we should talk about identity in Moldova itself. Most of the population ethnically identifies as Moldovan, and many say they speak Moldovan. However, Moldovan is often considered as one and the same as Romanian, except with maybe some different slang, and written sometimes in Cyrillic. So, what is going on? Moldova for a while was a kingdom containing both the current Republic of Moldova and a region of Romania known as Moldova, and during this time had its own history, and according to Moldovanist, or people who argue Moldovans are a distinctive people from Romanians, culture. Skipping a whole lot of history, after World War II, Moldova was brought into the USSR, and a Moldovan identity was encouraged to help separate it from Romania, along with bringing a significant number of ethnic Russians and Ukrainians and other people into the country. After the fall of the USSR, Moldova and Romania talked about merging together, supported by a group of people known as Unionist. However, tension within Moldova and the complicated logistics and cost prevented this merger. Not every person or party neatly falls into the Moldovanist versus Unionist framework, but this division between whether Moldovans are just Romanians or they are their own unique people still affects political parties in the country. Moldova also is quite famous for having a lot of corrupt politicians and just corruption present in the country. It seems this is somewhat changing with anti-corruption parties and blocs rising in recent years, but it still continues to haunt the Moldovan political scene, and Moldova remains one of the more corrupt countries in Eastern Europe. Another important effect of corruption is many historically powerful parties in Moldova aren't really around anymore, especially looking at firmly pro-unionist parties because the public have lost confidence in them and found new alternatives to turn to. Let's start looking at Moldova's political structure. Moldova notably has two autonomous regions. First in the south there is Gagauzia, a region where the Gaugaz minority is mostly found, and Transnistria, a region in the east between the Ukrainian-Moldovan border and Dniester River, hence the name Transnistria, where there is a large Russian and Ukrainian community. In the 90s after Moldovan independence, in both Gagauzia and Transnistria, separatist forces broke off and formed their own de facto independent states with the assistance of the Russians, who still maintain a military presence in Transnistria. In 1995, Gagauzia rejoined Moldova, but with its own autonomous status and still often with a combative relationship towards the central government. Transnistria is still under the control of a separatist government, but limited interaction between the breakaway state and the central government do still exist. But these regions are important since Gagauzia has a fairly important governor who heads the territory, who I will mention later, and both regions are very hostile towards Western integration and favor the status quo for fear of losing their autonomy or rights. Moldova has a single legislative body, the Parliament of Moldova. The parliament is made up of 101 MPs who are elected via proportional representation. A party needs to win at least 5% of the vote, while a coalition of parties needs to win at least 7% of the vote in order to make it into parliament. I was actually surprised to learn people in Transnistria, despite being under separatist control, can actually vote in parliamentary elections, with 42 polling stations set up in the region. MPs will vote on rules and regulations, and will elect the prime minister, the second most important political figure in the country under the president. So with that out of the way, let's get to the parties. First, we have the ruling party of Moldova, the Party of Action and Solidarity, or Partito Acciuni Si Solidaritati, or PAS. PAS was formed in 2016 by a Moldovan politician, Maya Sandu, during large-scale protests against corruption in the country. She led the party, promising to fight corruption and bring about a more modern and Western Moldovan government. PAS would go on to win seats in the 2019 election, helping form a government for a brief period. Sandu would then win the presidential election in 2020, and then in 2021 actually won a majority of the vote in the parliamentary elections, and has been able to dominate the government. They ideologically are seen as representing center-right liberals in favor of EU integration. They tend to get the most support from in and around the capital Chisinau, the middle of the country, and in the diaspora. I also get the sense that progressives or more socially 
open, people are more likely to back the party due to its pro-West and Sandu's more progressive messaging during the presidential campaign. It's overall the party for those that are opposed to corruption and want to join the EU. POS currently has 63 MPs and won 52.9% of the vote last election. It is headed by Igor Grosu, an MP and former minister, although Sandu is the de facto face of the party. POS is big on fighting corruption, aligning with the West, and liberalizing the economy. It is strongly opposed to corruption, wanting to punish officials who stole state funds, wants an independent judicial system, and promotes a meritocratic civil service. It supports a market economy, wants to change labor laws to help promote job growth, and reforming both the education and healthcare system to better provide services. For example, the party argues for greater transparency and a reduction in the bureaucracy and informal payments in the healthcare sector. It is pro-EU, wanting to join the EU, and is in favor of closer relations with Ukraine. It also wants more environmental protections, wants to build up infrastructure in the country, and help further develop relations with the diaspora. It will not a firmly pro-unionist party, does have unionist members in its ranks, with Sandu saying if a referendum were held, she would vote for reunification. Sandu campaigning for president in 2019 as an anti-corruption pro-West candidate, who was also an unmarried woman, led to a lot of rumors about her, like that she was secretly a lesbian or she was unwomanly because she wasn't married. This shows that Sandu's non-traditional lifestyle has caused some concern among some in Moldovan society, and a lot of misinformation is being spread about the party in certain circles. Pasta's position as a party with partial unionist support has meant that Moldovanists can argue the party is trying to destroy Moldova as a nation, force Romanian rule on the country, and end the protection of minority groups in the country. But unionists can also argue that the party are de facto Moldovanists because they aren't pushing for a union and because they briefly worked with Moldovanists in 2019. Since it is pro-EU, they tend to be accused of being like puppets for the West by its political opponents. I asked POS if, like other liberal parties in Europe, they were accused of being for the rich, which they disagreed with, saying that POS has a diverse support base of people from many different walks of life, and the country isn't rich enough to really have a party solely for the well-off, although they did say that POS didn't stand for populist ideals, and the opposition does accuse individual supporters of being elitist. However, the biggest challenge the party has faced was with the rising cost of living the war in Ukraine has brought to the country. As many people are forced to spend more and more to survive and keep the lights on, this has resulted in large-scale protests against the government, which I'll talk about later when I'm talking about the SOAR party and a decline in opinion polls. Right now, the main opposition to POS comes from the Bloc of Communists and Socialists, or Blocu Communistilor si Socialistilor, or BCS. The Bloc is made up of two parties, the Party of Socialists of the Republic of Moldova, or PSRM, and the Party of Communists of the Republic of Moldova, or PCRM. Both parties were formed in the 90s and came to represent those that supported a Moldovanist identity, wanted a strong social safety net, and looked positively on Soviet rule in the country. The communists actually managed to outright win elections, which is quite remarkable for a post-Soviet country. From 1998 up until the 2014 election, they were the most voted for party every election and effectively controlled the country from 2001 to 2009. After the 2010 election, the Socialist Party emerged as its de facto successor, winning the most votes in the 2014 and 2019 elections, forming several coalition governments from 2019 until 2021. Both parties now work together, seeing as both occupy roughly the same ideological niche of being status on economics, socially conservative, and opposed to further EU integration. It got the most support from both the north and south of the country, and from both autonomous regions. It also generally gets more support among non-Romanian ethnic minorities, older voters, and somewhat those in more rural areas. It currently has 27 MPs and won 27.2% of the vote last election. The socialists are headed by Igor Dodon, a former president and MP, while the communists are headed by Vladimir Voronin, another former president, but this time current MP. One would expect BCS to be a really devoutly Marxist group, However, both parties hold views seemingly at odds with traditional leftist thought, such as the Socialist Party proudly proclaiming it has a, quote, commitment to Christian morality, while the communists argue for the, quote, formation of a favorable business climate and the establishment of an open innovation-oriented economy. Both things you probably wouldn't see LFI in France or the Japanese communists argue for. It's seen really as supporting the post-Soviet status quo, meaning socially it is opposed to progressive values, wanting to protect the nuclear family and oppose gender ideology, protecting the Moldovan language, and opposing unionist politics. 
they are often labeled as pro-Russian, seeing as they oppose the EU and especially NATO membership, and want to join the Eurasian Economic Union once the peaceful reintegration of Transnistria into Moldova and was assigned Belt and Road initiatives with China. The parties themselves often dislike the pro-Russian label, instead preferring to refer to themselves as pro-Moldovan, arguing they also want a Moldova that is neutral on the world stage between Russia and the West, and not aligning with either bloc. The bloc favors nationalizing certain sectors of the economy, financially supporting domestic producers more, wants a strong welfare state, favors a kind of corporatist partnership between the state, trade unions, and companies, and wants to financially support new families with children more. PSRM also supports reducing the number of MPs to 61, wants a crackdown on corruption, and wants more autonomy at the local level. The 2021 election saw left-wing parties fail to win either a majority or a plurality of the votes for the first time in the country since 1994. So, what happened? Well, while the socialist and communists weren't viewed as the most corrupt party during the late 2010s, they were seen as being very comfortable in the current corrupt Moldovan political climate. Many members of both parties have been viewed as corrupt, and they have been seen as unwilling to rock the status quo to bring much-needed changes to the country. The party was also accused of buying votes last election, which can help explain why it did so well in places like Transnistria. Its socially conservative attitude means that those who do hold more progressive values or don't fit traditional societal norms, like unmarried women perhaps, probably feel distant from the party, although since Moldova is a more conservative country, I'm not sure how much this affects their electoral success. Its position as a Moldovanist party, friendly with Russia, means it is viewed by its opponents as puppets of the Kremlin, either intentionally dividing the Romanian nation, or allowing Russia to occupy parts of the country, or just putting a foreign country's interest above their own. Finally, while it gets a lot of support among older people, its support base is dying off as years go by, which might partially explain why they have seen their fortunes reverse. While the bloc does make up an important part of Moldovan politics, it's possible their day in the sun may be coming to an end. The next party actually technically doesn't exist anymore, but we'll get into it. The Shore Party, or Partizo Shore, was founded in the late 90s, but was largely irrelevant in Moldovan politics. In 2015, businessman Ilion Shore joined the party while running to become mayor of Orhe, and he transformed the party into his image, hence the name of the party. It was in some way similar to BCS, just in the sense it was socially conservative, favored a more status economic approach, and was seen as pro-Russian. Actually, some politicians associated with the party have called on Russia to annex Moldova. Shore was a fairly controversial politician and person. He was involved in a scandal in 2014 that saw almost a billion dollars get stolen from the country, and actually Shore was placed under house arrest while he was serving as mayor. In 2019, he fled the country and has been living in Israel ever since, which has created the funny scenario of Shore appearing in interviews CGI'd in. Shore's party overall did best in the 2021 election in and around the city of Orhe and somewhat in the south of the country, although the party has been accused of buying votes, particularly in the latest Gaugau's governorship race. The party received 5.75% of the vote and won five seats in the last election, and the most recent winner of the Gagauzia governorship race was a member of the party. Shore and his party were some of the leading figures in the recent anti-POS protest. This has helped the party achieve widespread recognition and has become a rallying point against Sandu's rule. However, it was also accused of inflating its numbers at protests by buying protesters to protest in the capital. Shore actually in an interview admits this, but says he just paid for their bus fare to the capital. In June of this year, Shore's party was outlawed, being accused of being unconstitutional and being funded by Russia. The protests and the drama surrounding them are a very partisan issue in the country. If you like Shore, you probably think the government is just silencing its opposition, while if you aren't a fan of Shore, you probably see him and his party as being puppets for the Kremlin and intentionally stirring up dissent. Right now, the party is still banned, although a small parliamentary group does still exist in the Moldovan parliament, and lawyers for Shore are trying to overturn this ruling. What the end result of this will be, the Shore party being allowed to run again, Shore being completely divorced from Moldovan politics and losing his influence, or Shore merging his allies with BCS or some other pro-Russian group, remains unclear. Besides the parliamentary group, there is another group that has been accused of aiding Shore in influencing the country's politics, the Revival Party, or Partido Rinastide. The Revival Party was originally formed in 2011, but was mostly irrelevant for the next decade. In 2022 and 2023, however, several politicians left the Socialist and Communist Parties and joined the Revival Party, arguing that those parties had lost their way. The party pretty much supports the same stuff as the BCS or Shore, socially conservative, pro-Russian, and status economically. It is accused by the media of being an outfit for Shore, with several party members flying to Israel to meet with Shore. 
It's likely this party will serve as a backup in case the Shore party fails to be re-legalized before the next election, but if not, it will likely disappear. I did try to go to their website, but an error popped up. The party currently has four MPs. It is headed by Natalia Padaska. The last party with a presence in the parliament is the National Alternative Movement, Ormiskara Alternativa Nacionala, or MAN. MAN was formed in 2022 by ex-socialist and current mayor of Chisinau, Ion Chebon. Chebon has styled the party as a pro-EU social democratic party, and seeing as he is a relatively popular politician in the country, his party may see some success and did see a socialist MP defect to the party. However, most polls right now show it not passing the electoral threshold, so who knows. So those are the parties with seats in Parliament, but I thought I'd just briefly go over some other parties that are interesting or notable in some way. So first off, we have the party that got the most votes in 2021, but didn't actually pass the threshold. Our party, or Partito Nostru. Our party is the party of the former mayor of Balti, Renato Usati. Usati was a businessman before getting involved in politics in 2014, and came to be known as an eccentric figure, saying that he would get rid of the U.S. embassy and said put up a karaoke bar. He was accused of corruption and seen as being an agent for Russia by his opponents, so I guess having a similar appeal as sore to his supporters, but also karaoke lovers. He did pretty good in the first round of the presidential election in 2020, getting almost 17% of the vote, but failing to make it into the second round of voting. In 2021, his party, in a coalition with the small Fatherland Party, got 4.1% of the vote, with the most votes in and around the city of Balti. Usati and his party, like Man, are hovering around the 5% threshold, but still not enough to pass, so maybe their chances will improve when the next election takes place in 2025, but we will see. It will likely continue to influence politics in Balti, but beyond that, it might be a different story. After that, we have the European Social Democratic Party, or Partito Social Democrata European, or PSDE. PSDE has gone through several name changes, historically being called the Democratic Party of Moldova. The party was formed back in 1997 and has been an important player in Moldovan politics being a part of the government from 2009 to 2021 almost non-stop. It was often billed as a center-left social democratic and pro-EU party. However, they also have been seen as a corrupt party only really caring about holding on to power. For example, one of its former leaders, Vladimir Plahotnuk, was named the puppet master and was accused of manipulating Moldovan politics to ensure power for him and his allies. In the 2021 election, the party was wiped out, going from 24% of the vote in 2019 to only getting 1.8% of the vote, likely due to a combination of frustration with corruption coming from the party, lacking a strong ideology, and its confusing messaging about how bad it was for the pro-EU POS to work with the pro-Russian PSRM, which is something PSD did shortly after POS and the PSRM government collapsed in 2019. In 2021, they got the most support somewhat in the north along the Moldovan-Romanian border. It still maintains a decent presence in local politics and will likely continue to play some role in influencing Moldovan politics, although opinion polls show it well below the electoral threshold. The party is currently headed by Ion Sula, the former Minister of Agriculture. The last party I'll talk about is the Alliance for the Union of Romanians, or Aliante Pentru Urie Romanilor, or AUR. Some listeners may note this name is familiar, well, this is because I have already talked about the AUR on the show, with the AUR being an important political party in Romania, with it being the fourth largest party in Romania's parliament, and in polls right now showing it as the second most popular party in the country. AUR is a Romanian nationalist party calling for a greater Romania and the merging of Romania and Moldova together. So it operates in both countries, hoping to push the two together for that goal, making the AUR one of those unique parties that can test elections in multiple countries. So, how was its Moldovan branch? Well, in the 2021 election, it won only 0.49% of the vote, well below the electoral threshold, and opinion polls in Moldova that feature the party show it usually getting less than a percent of the vote. It did the best last election in and around Chisinau, the diaspora, and somewhat in the south, although they didn't get over 0.7% of the vote in any part of the country. It is notable solely because it operates in two countries, and I'm skeptical of how influential they will be in Moldovan politics. AUR is headed by George Simon, a deputy in the Romanian Chamber of Deputies. The Moldovan branch of the party is headed by Boris Volosati, who is actually also a member of the Chamber of Deputies, representing the Romanian diaspora. So those are the parties of Moldova. In conclusion, there is PAS, which represents pro-EU liberals, the BCS, which represents on-paper leftists, but also social conservatives and Moldovanists, and then there are several other smaller parties, which who usually represent more fringe voices, 
or are based around a singular, popular politician. Moldovan political parties right now seem to be somewhat retracting, with the country having less major parties than in previous years, with the electorate being more polarized around two main forces, the pro-West group and the pro-Russia group. It'll be interesting to see how these groups change and interact with each other, if BCS will remain a coalition of two parties, or if it will just merge together, or if the coalition will actually break apart, and similarly with POS, if POS will continue to remain in its dominant position, or it will decline. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Up next, I will do the history of Comoros, then I will do Moroccan political parties, and then I will do Swiss political parties. So uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, if you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.